Hey Scorpio, welcome back to Peony Lore, where we happen to help you find the beauty in all things. So this is going to be for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the week of February the 5th through the 11th. I hope you guys have been doing well. Um, <clears throat> let's get your Sacred Geometry card down here first, and then we'll jump into it. This is going to... Not you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to um, talk about the actual astrology. So if you're watching the daily astrology transits, it might make a little bit more uh, sense if you're looking at the energy for that day. Um, but even if you're not, we're going to give you the astrology read. We're going to give you the basic tarot read. We're going to pull everything that we can into it to assist you with what it is that you need to have this week. I was a little nervous before when they said three, and I was like, nah, they had three. <laughs> so this is what we're going to talk about this week. Um, at some point in the past, you asked for a manifestation. That's what the planting uh, seeds card is with the Genesis uh, sacred geometry. But sort of where you're at or where some things have been is sort of where we've been protecting those seeds that we've planted in the ground. Also, there's been a lot of uh, spirit energy around you as of late. But one of the things that they're trying to get your attention about is that... Um, we are probably going to need to boost up a little bit more of our protections, um, friends, because the Dreamweaver card being in the reverse position is also indicating that you asked for something and you started doing the work, but there's this need to possibly do a little bit more work. So we will review all of those this week. Um, the other thing that I want to be able to say, because they said, yeah, for, for some, is that Sometimes people stress themselves out about manifestations when the reality is you should set it and forget it and let that show up to you and let yourself be clear that your spirit team has got this and they're carrying the ball forward for you as much as they can this week, as much as you will allow them to. So those are the two ways that they're asking me to explain sort of what's going on. But we will go into the back of the book um, at the end of the reading to give you as much um, information as we can. Now... From the perfect astrology perspective, in the collective, okay, there are no main planets in the sign of Scorpio, again, except for Pallas Athena, which is the asteroid that talks to us about our wisdom, okay? Uh, the major things that are taking play, place this week um, that could be triggering, because most of the energy for Scorpio is in the sixth house, again, from the collective chart, okay, is in the sixth house of practical physical health, potential moves that we need to make physical moves, okay? So it's about the practical energy of day-to-day -day things that we need to do. Chopping wood and carrying water. What are we doing on our daily basis to support ourselves, okay? So those are the major things that are taking place. Obviously, this week we have some, uh, some big things. So we start off the week with the moon being in the sign of Sagittarius on... Tuesday, it moves into the sign of Capricorn. On Thursday, it moves into the sign of Aquarius. On Sunday, or no, Saturday, it moves into the sign of Pisces. So if any of those are important to you, uh, let's just make sure that we're tracking with that. However, this week, when Mercury moves into Aquarius, which is late Sunday, Monday, um, it's going to change the communication style for everyone. It just is. That's its job. It's going to shake, uh, rattle, and roll some things. Now, because you don't have any major planets that are in the sign of Scorpio, you have to default to where Scorpio's ruling planet Pluto is, which, of course, we all know is in Aquarius. So that's important to you, okay? <laughs> so we're going to do a lot of default conversations to what is going on with Pluto in Aquarius. And I have to tell you, for Scorpio specifically, the only day that I know is going to be a little bit more... Um, interesting in the transits very specifically for you um, is going to be very similar to Libra which I think is just hilarious <laughs> uh, is going to be on Monday the other day of the week that could be very important for you to pay attention to is going to be um, uh, Thursday no yeah Monday and Thursday for Scorpio and then um, also when you get towards the weekend because the Piscean energy comes in here. So um, Monday, Thursday, and then Saturday, Sunday. So those are the days that are going to be a little bit extra um, for you. But I got to tell you that they're supportive for you because you've got your sister sign here on the weekend. So let's go ahead and get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Thursday. Did I have another one that flipped? No. 
Okay, that's Thursday. Friday, a Libra energy again. Saturday, let's get Saturday for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Okay, mm-hmm. And Sunday. To me, that's just, yeah, okay. There we go. The bottom of the deck is very swift communication coming this week for our Scorpios, whether you are Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Like I said, when you look at the perfect astrology, if you look at the day-to-day -day energy when I do the charts, um, there's not a lot of main configurations for Scorpio until you get to the weekend. So, And even then, Mercury is uh, switching some things up with that uh, Pluto in Aquarius. So let's see what we've got. Monday is Justice. Uh, so that is Libra energy. Um, the big thing that's going to be taking place here on Monday, again, number one, Mercury moves into the sign of Aquarius. So it's going to want people to be very enthusiastic about their own originality and lots of different things. And it's going to ch 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 <laughs> chatty Cathy of the universe is Mercury, right? Then the other thing that takes place is because Mercury moves into Aquarius and then the... Um, the moon shifts positions, okay, from Sagittarius. The next day, we're going to have this a little bit of a section of time where we call it, it's more called the void. Anyway, late afternoon, when you get to the energy of Monday, we're having a conjunction with Mercury in Aquarius where Pluto sits in Aquarius. Okay, so when the conjunctions happen, those are activation points. Okay, and that's going to be like about 5 um, a.m. in the morning-ish because everything takes place on Monday, like super dark early. Okay, so like 5 o'clock in the morning to about 8 o'clock, depending upon which coast you're at, you're going to be in that energy literally all day. There's going to be like this 10-hour gap of energy shift that takes place on Monday. Long and short, Scorpio, Justice, Libra, good stuff. When the Justice card shows up, it means that there's positive communication that's coming towards you or you're going to end the week in positive communication as well. But from a Justice perspective, if there's something that's going on with paperwork, legal issues, or other things, it does look like it's going to show up in your favor and or look at the Libra reading because you have it very heavy in your chart. And or finally, you could be dealing with the Libra <laughs> on this day. Justice and beauty and expansion in the things uh, that Spirit is asking you to do. Tuesday Center we switch over into Sagittarius. Now, we do have Sagittarius moon until about 4 o'clock in the morning to about 7 o'clock in the morning. So when we have the void of the moon like that, sometimes it has less power um, in, in that energy because it's getting ready to move. But Tuesday through Thursday, for most people, are, are going to be very busy this week. But we have Sagittarius energy. We do have Sagittarius squaring off with what's happening with your sister sign, Neptune and Pluto. Um, I seriously doubt it's going to affect you too much, but you do see that the results are that you have the Two of Cups in reverse on Wednesday. And so when temperance is in the reverse position, we are being extremely impatient. So what I see is that you are receiving some really good information and you get thrown off because you want it now. <laughs> um, and that's okay. So, but it can affect the way that communication takes place with you and another person. So when we get to this energy of Wednesday, um, Venus gets involved in some conversation. And the other thing I have to bring up is that Mars, your 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 traditional ruler also has this energy with Capricorn. Um, another conjunction. There's a lot of conjunctions this week, you guys. This is going to ask for things to be done sweetly in the way that you're doing work. Um, but it's also going to push how fast those that work is happening. So that's going to throw some things off balance here these next couple of days. When we get to the energy of Thursday, this is a crazy day for everybody and their brother. We have four four conjunctions taking place on this day, okay? Whew. Capricorn moon with Mars again, okay? Then the, then the moon moves into Aquarius on this day, okay? The moon moves into Aquarius. Mercury moved in on this day. Now the moon is moving in, okay? When that happens, um, Aquarius and the Mercury energy they converge together. That's a conjunction. And then Pluto, like I said, has its conjunction also. So Mercury, a.k.a. the magician, 
in the reverse position um, could indicate that there's some um, other aspects about the way that that communication is coming to you very specifically, Scorpio, and it just may not be the right day to get some things done, okay? You just might want to take a, take a chill here on Thursday just a little bit. We'll do more. We'll get more clarification. But then we have Libra energy coming back out on Thursday, Wednesday's Thursday, Friday energy, beg your pardon, this new moon energy that's coming in, the new moon with Aquarius. This is actually Libra, but I suppose you could substitute Aquarius for it if you really wanted to. Um, you know, there's nothing specifically that's going on in your chart. There's nothing specifically going on with Mars. There's nothing specifically going on with um, Pluto on this day. So you got Libra energy. The next day, Saturday here, we got this situation that takes place here with Mercury in Aquarius. And this Queen of Cups energy that we do have sitting here in the reverse position, my friends, you, you guys already know that uh, that is usually Cancerian energy, but it can also be transferred into Pluto energy. Okay? We are uncomfortable with the status of things going on. Okay? And when the Queen of uh, Cups is in the reverse position, it's it, we have to readdress something that already happened in order to try to clean it up. Normally when she's in this position, we've been there, we've done that, now we're prepared to counsel other people. This is also indicating to me that there's two individuals that could very well be going at it here. We're having a lot of argumentation. We have a lot of things that are going on. Part of this, and I'm just going to go there because they're sharing this with me, has um, argumentation to do with some sort of a legal situation going on between you and a partner and a, and a kiddo at the end of the day. Um, whether it's a break up uh, or a breakdown in communication, um, we're paying attention to the way that we can move forward with this. But this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Um, yeah. Fire and water uh, not mixing. Um, and then we have air and water not mixing. So this could be a very interesting week, although there's not a lot going on. There's a lot going on behind the scenes, obviously. Page of Cups, when it shows up to this energy on Sunday, um, like I said, the better days for me as I'm looking at the way that your wisdom comes into place based upon the astrology is that when the moon moves into Pisces, it will support you. You're just going to have to go back and take another review of something so that you come out the wiener wiener chicken dinner here on Sunday. Okay, that's literally how I'm seeing this. So there's a couple of different scenarios that are very, very interesting. Something must change and, they're, and we're definitely going to find out what that is this upcoming week. Um, we just have to do our very, very best, friends, to use our self-control because there is a shift that's coming up for us. And I say Scorpio us because I'm Scorpio rising, okay? Um, so there is some sort of a shift that's coming up for us. But when you look at the astrology, there's not a whole heck of a lot that's um, negative. It's just pushing against the narrative of what we need to do. So let's look at this energy, this Knight of Cups energy that comes in here, the White Knight of the deck, right? The Knight of Cups energy is coming in to let us know that someone is here to offer us something that is very, very beneficial. Um, when the Knight of Cups comes in, it usually is somebody that's very trustworthy, okay? And this also can indicate a uh, Scorpio or Piscean energy. So this could also be you giving some information to somebody else this week, Okay. Let's look at what's going on with this Temperance card in the reverse position. Sagittarius in reverse. All right. Something is out of balance, out of whack. Ooh. Defaulting to the moon card. Cancer, a.k.a. Neptune also. So when we have the moon card, right, there's more information that needs to come up. We don't have all of the information at this moment we're upset or we realize that something has to shift, but you don't have all the details. So we don't go too far left. We don't go too far right. We stay right in our lane <laughs> and we follow the instructions of the moon, whatever else it is that needs to come up. So on Wednesday's energy, when we have this two of cups, this is, you know, it's an argument. It's an uncomfortable conversation. Um, we could be out of our element. We could be realizing that we have to shift something that is um, emotionally oddball for us. Yeah. We have the Ten of Swords, and then we also have the Six of Pentacles. So whatever the situation is, we are definitely being told we're out of balance this week. The Six of Pentacles is the amount of work energy that you put into it is the same energy that you receive out of it. So that is complete and total balance. So something is completely off. 
Very similar to Libra's reading, there could be the situation where you have to cut somebody out or some sort of a situation out of your life. Okay? Um, <clears throat> I, I really think that somebody needs to go back and take a look at that Libra reading. It was full. <laughs> it was full on. But it's important in order for you to maintain balance, it's important for you to always say what you need to say, even if you feel like you're being at risk for being open, an open book with an emotion. But this whole time period that we're in right now is about changing those thought processes. And if something is preventing you from being in your highest aspect of what it is that you need to do to move forward, it very simply can be, you know, cleansing, clearing some things out to be more balanced, right? Uh, are you hydrated? <laughs> I mean, you, you could take things as simply as that, or there's just something or something that you've been involved with from an emotional perspective. It's just no longer for you. There's an argument that needs to be resolved here. So let's go back into the energy of Mercury or the magician that takes place here for us on Thursday. And remember, this is a heavy duty day. And Scorpio, you were born psychic. And so you have the idea and the knowing uh, that these things are shifting before they're actually day. So look at the energy, not specifically the totality of the day. But on Thursday, um, there is a sextile that comes in with that moon energy that's in Capricorn with where things are trying to work and be dutiful and persistent with Neptune and Pisces. And this is before the shift goes into Aquarius. Now, the Seven of Wands energy that we have here is holding it together. Okay. <laughs> Um, the actual sign of the Seven of Wands is Leo, just to give you that idea. And the Leo energy is asking you to make sure that you're expressing yourself. Um, make sure that you're speaking kindly to yourself about the victories and the other things that you have accomplished. Now, if you're dealing with someone and you have a little bit of nervousness about whether or not you should cut this person off, I'm just going to put it in, into this scenario. Usually the magician in the reverse position from a perspective of an individual is not necessarily bueno. <laughs> um, it, and it means that this person has manipulation energy around them, and so you need to make sure that you're being on your toes. Okay? So when we have this Libra card comes coming back out again, ooh, Queen of Wands, or Queen of... Uh, yeah, Queen of Wands against it. Wow. Yeah, there's... Ooh. Ah. I'm not liking this scenario. I'm going to pull a third deck because this there's two there's three people involved in this situation this week that you're going to have to be mindful of. Also, three scenarios very similar to Libra. We got to make some harsh decisions and we got to make some harsh cuts with things that are preventing us from moving forward with the energy that the Queen of Wands wants to bring, which is enthusiasm about our work, our projects, um, our employment. Um, it also is Mars. So the Queen of Wands energy, we, we may, you need to take a look at the aggressive energy of how you're doing something because the Queen of Wands is Mars. The ultimate and all be all is that we have this five of swords energy that we need to cut through this. So for some of you, Scorpio, this is going to be like, listen, you got to pull the wool off. you got to take those glasses off. Something is not right with the way that business is occurring for you right now. For some of you, you got to we got to get down to the brass tacks about it, which is why you're being asked to go back in to review something again. Right. Because something is not right now. Or you feel that it's not right. Or you and this other person are trying to get to the brass tacks about whatever this high-ended negotiation needs to be. But at the end of the day, this Five of Swords is not good. This is competition. This is backstabbing. This is um, revealing that there's holes in contracts and some other things like that. So again, we go into this energy of you ask for something. We have to make sure that we're doing our very best to protect it because this could affect what's potentially taking place for you, right? Let's go into this Queen of Cups. Ooh, hang on here. Five of Cups. Yep, we got to heal that shit. <laughs> we got to review. Okay, what did I put in? What did I get out of it? Okay, did I overcommit or did I not receive the commitments from other people? Regardless, there's some healing that takes place because you get down to the bottom of it. Let's go hit this Page of Cups. This new offer, this new opportunity, this new way of going about it. Yep. We have to change our thought process. Um, Capricornian energy there. Aquarian energy at the bottom. Um, the star card is offering us this opportunity for healing. 
um, before our manifestations come through. This is very interesting. We are going to pull a third deck because they said so. So this is, we're just going to, we're going to hit it. Let me get another level of clarification on this Justice Knight of Cups here for our Scorpio on Monday. Okay. Oh my God, it's the star card. Aquarius. Okay. So, in order to make things right, there could be an opportunity for an Aquarius to come back and want to have a conversation with you, um, or you're judging the way that this energy between you and this Aquarius person could have been in the past. Um, at the end of the day, there needs to be some healing here, and maybe that's just sort of what you're learning. In order for it to be more balanced, you've got you've to say some things this week. Let's go to this Temperance and the Moon card. Okay. Six of Cups, King of Swords, oh, Aquarius again, thinking about better times, better opportunities, better op uh, better momentum when things were good, you know, glory days type of energy here. Um, this is also high spirit energy as well. So King of Swords is Aquarius, just to make sure you have that distinction. They've showed up here 17, 11 times, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's go back to the Ten of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, and the Two of Cups here. All scenarios. Yep, Four of Cups. Um, there's going to be this appreciation of this understanding. So when you get the Four of Cups, this is talking about an acceptance of something. Spirit is knowing that you might be fine and dandy with the Three of Cups you think you have, but they're sitting here trying to bring you this Fourth Cup and you don't see it. So there could have been some stagnancy and some things that were taking place, and you have to let that stagnancy go in order to allow this new balance to come in. But when it is in reverse, there is a full acceptance of whatever is in that cup. We go, okay. <laughs> Let's get to this Magician and the Seven of Wands. Okay, we have two cards that want to come out, so we'll take them both. The first one that comes out here is the Four of Swords. Rest, Contemplation. Deep, deep, deep meditation here with this Magician card. And then the other one that comes out is this Page of Cups. Yep. So if you are taking the opportunity to go into meditation here, you're, A, you're going to understand that this person means you no harm or that this energy of this offer that's coming in, maintain your integrity because you could be the stinker in the situation too here, Scorpio. As if. <laughs> now let's look at this Libra energy again. Um, when the queen comes up here, the worst, uh, but we have to go there, the worst thing that the uh, queen of swords gets is chopping off their heads. But that's also a strong asset. We're not playing around here. Whatever has been competing with anything that has to do with our business, our intelligence, or our energy, we're cutting that shit out. That's what has to happen. So let's look at this. Queen of swords. The you know, Empress, there's Libra, Venus energy all up in this thing. We also have the energy of Leo, the Sun in reverse, and this one wanted to come out as well. Four of Pentacles. Mm. Scorpio, you are going to be asked to reevaluate some sort of business conversation. Something is completely out of balance, uh, and you're going to have to figure that out this week. It looks like you're going to, though. Five of Cups is whatever it is. We go and we heal that. I don't need to clarify that. But this very much could have something to do with um, uh, an Aquarius that you have known in the past or are dealing with. I'll tell, also take a look at where the Aquarius um, happens to be in your own personal birth chart. Because that's going to lead you to another understanding. And if you need support with that, description box below on how to connect with me. Page of Cups in the World. <clears throat> looky, looky. The moon in reverse. You figured out everything you needed to here. The Six of Swords in the reverse position. Okay. So you understood where things were not appropriate for you. And then we have the Death card. So you're coming full circle this week with some conversation that's coming in and healing. Okay. Okay. I do like that. And then the bottom of the deck is the Queen of Queen of Cups again. So basically what it boils down to is, um, I'm going to take it here. You have an idea. We're going to give you all the scenarios. They are protected. 
You ask for this. It is granted. It is coming to you. Your spiritual team wants to get a hold of you. Again, that 4-4 energy that's here in order to guarantee that what it is that you um, have asked for is being shifted the way that it needs to shift and they're involving you in the process. Otherwise, some of you really need to go back and protect something that was done in the past or examine the level of protection that you put on something that you asked for in the past. Okay? Um, I would review paperworks. Trust the information that you need is coming towards you this week. It is going to ultimately allow you to heal on a different level. Star card is guaranteeing that those manifestations are coming in, but if you have to take care of something first, because you've been the stinker maybe, then that's what it is. Sorry, Scorpio. Don't come to me if you want fluff. <laughs> Here we go. In spirit of uh, the Lunar New Year, Year of the Dragon, we're going to go in with the Dragon Oracle. Woohoo! Sideways, air dragon. <laughs> la la la. Helps you to rise above earthly matters. Communicate honestly. What did I just say? Brings inspiration and hope, and it helps you to see things from a higher perspective. Gotta be honest. Let's go in with your energy card Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. What did I freaking tell you? Some sort of a contract or something uh, that you have in place may not be of the highest and best. Spirit is going to take a look at making adjustments to that contract because something is not quite 100. And you're going to have to pay attention to it. You're going to have to speak to it this week, literally. The action card, the eight, showing up here twice. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Let's look into your actual numerology. Libra, again, contract, something. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, the numerology card. Oof. We have three cards that want to come out, so we're going to pull them. The first one is the nature card. The second one is the happy ending, but it's in the reverse position. And then the third one we have is spiritual partnership. But what they're asking me to tell you is that this happy ending will come about as soon as you are understanding your connection with somebody else for the long term. Okay. And also they're asking me to state that the happy ending could be the status knowing that this is where you're at and we're trying to get you to the point where it's adjusted so that your long-term goals are protected. Spiritual partnership also means you and your higher self coming into connection, your team working with you, upgrading you, doing many of those different things that will assist you. Star card, death card, you definitely come out in the end. However, you've got to get into an honest conversation with yourself about what's not making you happy. Some of you simply just need to go outside and hug a tree, love a tree. <laughs> literally <laughs> let's let's get you feeling good and part of that is going to be how you're taking care of yourself and the last card we have before we go into the into the uh, sacred geometry here is from the angels what do the angels want to share with our scorpio sun moon and rising this week honest and honest communication i don't how many other ways can you say that they are also talking about an amount of healing energy and they are also talking about you making sure that you are calling in the angels for your protection. Please don't avoid us. Some of you guys are not doing the work. This is going to assist your strength and guidance and this will have something to do with the manifestations that you're asking for. So literally everything that I just said um, is going to be different for everyone. However, you ask for something do what you need to do to protect it. Continue to do the work. And please don't forget about your angels and spirit guides and your other pantheons to come in here and assist you and bolster you up when you need a little bit of extra juice. But honesty and communication showed up 14 ways from Sunday. I would be taking that very seriously. Regardless, it's coming in. So, we talked about something in the past. Spirit says they are on top of this. They're trying to get your awareness about something that needs to shift in order to maintain that. I'm going to focus on the protection card. Okay? We're going to focus on the protection card. Um, <clears throat> because for some of you, it's going to take this down to a different level. Okay? So the protection card itself is, I am protected from negative energy and or ill harm. It's a reminder of the importance to safeguard yourself against any unwanted energies in your life also. 
it's also a gentle reminder of the significance of protecting your personal and uh, personal auric field every single day. Bubble up, okay? So the energy of the pentagram that's here is in itself a magical symbol. It has gotten corrupted and people think it's negative when it's not. Earth, air, fire, water, and ether, meaning God, goddess, spirit, you and your connection into the higher realms and the circle is protecting it. However, it's used to shield, okay, any negativity. And the double circle represented is additional protection. So this activates it, but then the second circle that's here is the... Um, it, it, it does an extra layer of protection. Regardless of whether or not you use this type of protection or other energetic protections um, or sigils or whatever else it is that you have going on, there is a requirement for some of you to protect your physical self, protect your home, your hearth, protect your wallet, protect all those different types of things. And some of you, I would... Um, your angels want to call your attention to someone that could be assisting you. Crystals, all the dark ones, jet, black kyanite, black tourmaline, uh, labradorite, bronzite, um, all of those different types of things are going to be used to support you, whether you're creating like a little teeny tiny grid in your car to peel people's energy off of you at the end of a work day, whether you create a grid at home by your front door or at minimum something by your bed. So make sure that you're cleansing and clearing the energy that's off of you. Although I don't see it astrologically as a very negative week, there are going to be some things that shake. Okay, this is just a period of that time when Mercury moves. It changes the way that people communicate, period, end of discussion. So they're just telling you, Mind your P's and Q's. Stay in your lane. We're going to show you some new information. Regardless, we're going to help you fix whatever shows up. But get on board our love train here and make sure you're doing what you can do to protect yourself. So that's a very 412. All right. Well, that is what I have for you, Scorpio. Hopefully this has been supportive. Do all the youtube -y things if you do agree with it. Make sure that you're looking at your sun, your moon, your rising, and the description box below to book a personal session with me, a healing with me, and or purchasing the crystals that I have on my website. Many blessings. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.